We are live. Welcome to Mandalorian Season 1, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called The Sin. Spoilers for the Star Wars movies leading up to this point and this show leading up to and including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. This video is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts. Some is analysis, some is jokes, etc. When the entire show has aired and I've been able to watch every single episode of all the seasons they make, I will do a spoiler-free review, so I will not be going into my regular review stuff in this video. Now, my Star Wars experience... I have watched the... the All, all of the Star Wars movies except for episode 9 and my ratings I give episodes 4 and 5 a 10 out of 10 episode 6 a 6 all three prequels are 5 out of 10 episode 7 is a 7 Rogue One is an 8 8 is a 10 I only just got done watching Solo so I haven't completely decided yet and yeah so ranking them Worst to best, two, three, one, six, seven, row one, four, five, and eight. And I quite like the episodes of this show up to and including this one. Now, this episode doesn't really have any broad performances. It is a dark episode. The acting and the episode is great. I think the episode lives up to its potential. And there are great character moments for all characters. Everyone behaves in character. And yeah, so diversity, the Iranian-American lab coat is in this. So it's the female armor and the women in the flashback to the war. So let's go. Right, so on to the specific notes for the specific episode. You know, we have Grogu sticking his head up out of the egg, crawling out, and, you know, it, it wants that little round, the little ball thing on the, you know, on the lever on the dashboard. And, you know, Mando takes it and says, it's not a toy, and it looks so sad. And as Mando and Grogu travel through the streets, we have another place that feels alive and lived in. It doesn't feel like a set full of extras which you know in reality is what it is and yeah so you know this is one of the episodes where mando you know he has to get past one of those you know robot eye things to to get to yes i realize i want to say it was the first episode also had that but i hadn't thought of the following reference at the time in Episode 6 and in Mysteries of the Sith, the the lead doesn't get, you know, the, the robot eye doesn't just let him, you know, he's, he's not allowed in, which, you know, Mando is, of course. I, I just like seeing the lead of something in Star Wars being let in past the, the robot eye. And we see Grogu crying as he's being transported into another room, and... You know, Mando doesn't want to admit it, but clearly he does not like that. He's he's not okay with Grogu being upset. And we have another scene with the armor and the heavy infantryman starts a fight with Mando over taking Imperial Steel. I quite like seeing him help Mando later on, and you know, that's ah crap. I, his name is right on the tip of my tongue. And I think I wrote it later in the document, so I'll just scroll. That is John Favreau playing the, the heavy... You know, I'm calling him the heavy infantryman because that's how the, the subtitles identify him. Yeah, that's John Favreau. So, of course, he, he you know, makes sure to get a role where he's really badass. And we're given a little bit of information about the whistling birds. So, you know, of course, we're going to see them later on in the same episode. 
and we get more of Mando's flashback to his childhood, the attack where he lost his parents, and we see that he was actually found by one of the super battle droids. I'm guessing next time we see flashback, we're going to see a Mandalorian take that one out. I, I've seen some people talking specifically about this episode who hadn't at the time seen later episodes talking about maybe he was, like, you know, raised... Maybe he spent time around these these droids after that. But yeah, actually, you know, every time he goes to the armorer, he flashes back to the this this childhood attack. So it's you know that every time he completes a job and gets this, I want to what do they call Beskar steel? That's yeah. But it also helps future foundlings, so. And Mando is told that all the bounty hunters had tracking fobs for Grogu, which is very important for later. And I've seen, you know, several people independently of each other saying it's it's very John Wick. I, cultural osmosis, I know just enough to understand that, but yeah. And that is a, a quite cool, yeah. And, you know, Mando's going to try to bury himself in work to not think about Grogu. And when he gets into the ship, he can't stop thinking about Grogu because of the, you know, the little ball thing reminds him. And so goes back to the place where the Imperials hold up. And I like that before it was full of life. So now that it's so empty, it feels wrong rather than just an empty set. You know, I... I I'm guessing it's like nighttime. I'm not sure it's. I'm not. Was it particularly dark? Whatever you know. It. Yeah. S certainly the the, the shops are closed, so there's not a lot of activity. And we see that they threw out the the egg carriage that Grogu was in, which, you know, okay, so. At the very least, you know. At, if you really want to give them credit, maybe it just means they're not going to transport him anywhere. But very likely, it means that they're not going to keep him comfortable, maybe not even alive. And we see that Mando's rifle can listen to audio through walls. That's really badass. And Mando destroys that tiny eyeball robot thing. Once again, I played Mysteries of the Sith multiple times. I myself have really wanted to do that. I really love the dim lighting, smoke, and flashlights on rifles when Mando takes out the stormtroopers in that first room. And the guy in the lab coat actually thought Mando was going to hurt Grogu because this is such a ruthless world. And, you know, Mando did give them Grogu. And, you know, he did, he said in the, the first episode, no, 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 please bring him back alive. So, him in this episode you know, being worried Mando's going to hurt him, and saying, you know, if it wasn't for me, he'd already be dead. Makes sense. And we see more stormtroopers against Mando. They're completely outmatched. But four of them did manage to surround him, and he uses the whistling birds. They're really, really cool. And all of the bounty hunters tracking fobs start beeping since it's been discovered that Mando took Grogu, so... Now he has to contend with all of the other bounty hunters. I do appreciate that Karga does, Carl Weathers' character, does give Mando a chance to talk it over. I get the feeling that with most, most people, he would just have them shot immediately. But, you know, they've made each other a lot of money. And Mando, yet again, is extremely tactical. He jumps onto the speeder and fires from cover, threatens the droid until it drives off with him. Now, some might think that Mando will be fine with the Beskar armor. I'm betting that at least some of the bounty hunters do have guns that can shoot through it. They know they're, they're, that they're going up against a Mandalorian. I quite like the line, If you try to stop us, we'll kill you and strip your body for parts. Yikes. And Mando uses a flamethrower, but then it runs out of fuel. And the other Mandalorians come to his re rescue so cool seeing all, you know, all of them all at once with, you know, the armor and the jetpacks and the dual-wielding pistols. 
and and the heavy infantry Mandalorian has a machine gun with three barrels. So cool. Stop giving Mando grief, Karga. Honestly, the moment that they said earlier in the episode that only one Mandalorian was out in public at any one time, I really should have figured that this would be the episode where a bunch of them would leave all at once. And I, I'm i guessing that they're going to have to, like, they have to find a different place to be. Because now everybody knows that, you know, and they... They're prob it's probably going to be really dangerous to, as, as a Mandalorian to be out. And Mando shot grief, but he did survive because of the Beskar steel that, you know, he had in his, you know, chest pocket, so near his heart. And I've seen some people say that maybe Mando intentionally shot him there to kind of say, get off my back, we've made each other a lot of money. You know, next shot, first one's a warning, Padre, kind of thing. I, I'm not 100% sure. It, that does make sense. I gotta get me one of those. And Grogu still wants the bald thing from the dash, so now Mando gives it to him. And over the end credits, we see concept arts art for different scenes of the episode. Again, I'm not saying that only started happening in this one. This was just the one where I noticed at first. And, you know, since Heavy Infantry Mandalorian is played by Jon Favreau, the, the part at the end where he's flying in his jetpack and he does the salute, you know, given that he directed Iron Man 1, that has to be a reference to, yeah, that's really cool. And that is it. So remember, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. This is the way.